Hello everyone, my name is Oindrula Charuji and I'm a data scientist in the AI Ops team at Red Hat. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we automated our notebook workflow using Elira and Kubeflow pipelines. For most of our data science workflows, including the AI for Continuous Integration project, we are using Jupyter Notebooks for data collection, metric calculation, and all parts of the machine learning workflow. These tasks, such as data collection, metric calculation, need to be performed sequentially and continuously, requiring us to automate the sequential running of the notebooks using a simple workflow. Using Elira, Jupyter Lab, and the Notebook Pipelines Visual Editor, we can create and run our workflows using Kubeflow Pipelines, which is a platform for building and deploying scalable machine learning workflows. An instance of Kubeflow Pipelines is available for our use in Operate First. You can find the endpoint on the operate-first.cloud website by going under Users and Kubeflow. In this example, we automate a sample Kubeflow workflow using the Elira UI for the AI for Continuous Integration project. So let's look at the steps to run the pipeline. So to access the Elira UI, you can launch the Elira 0.0.8 .0 image on the operate first MOC Jupyter Hub. Here I'm going to select a medium sized container, the Elira 0.0.0, .0 image and hit start. So once the Jupyter Hub image has successfully launched, we will clone the Git repo for the OCP CI analysis project. So once the repo has successfully completed cloning, you should be able to see it on the left hand side file browser. Now, in order to select the notebooks to add to the pipeline, they must satisfy an automation template. We also have a template notebook, which outlines all the conventions that the notebook must follow in order to fit into the pipeline. And we also have a video which goes over that in detail. So some of the prerequisites for formatting the notebook, firstly, for the notebooks to run in automation and communicate with one another, we need to store and read the data to and from an S3 bucket. And as you can see here, we are specifying the S3 credentials like the bucket endpoint, access key, secret key, and other information in the notebook. Um, secondly, the notebooks must have automation flags within them in order to ensure that when the environment variable for automation is configured as true, the notebooks read and write from S3 and not locally. So once we have a set of notebooks which satisfy the automation template, we now want to containerize the project dependencies and tag a new release for the project as a container image and using the AICOE pipeline and the thought bots, we can tag a new release for the project and push it to the project square registry very easily just by opening a new issue and by tagging the AICOE CI pipeline. And once this is completed, a new tag release for the project will be available on the project square registry. And this image contains the project wide dependencies. So once the project image is available on the query registry, we will now add it to the Elira metadata using the command line or UI. So I will switch back to the Jupyter lab terminal. And from here, I will run the Elira metadata install runtime images command. So here I'm specifying a display name for the project image. I'm providing a description and I am providing the link to the Quay image that we just created. So as you can see here, 
the runtime image has been written to the project's metadata. So next, we will create a runtime to be used in the Kubeflow pipeline using the CLI. So for that, we will run the Elira metadata installed runtimes command. Here we are specifying a display name for the runtime that we are creating. We specify the API endpoint, which points to the Kubeflow pipeline endpoint. We mention the schema name as Kubeflow, the engine we are using our Tekton. And then we also specify the bucket credentials like the endpoint, the access key and secret key, which are username and password, and the name of the bucket. So here we are using a public bucket, but if you're using private bucket credentials in order to avoid exposing your S3 credentials, you need to define a Kubernetes secret within your user namespace containing the S3 username and password and you need to specify the secret name in this runtime configuration. And you can find more information about this in the Elira documentation itself. So once we run this command, we have successfully created the runtime. We will now open an Elira pipeline editor and drag and drop the notebooks which we want to add to the pipeline. So for this project, we have already created a pipeline which is available as a part of the repository. So looking at the notebooks which are available as a part of this pipeline, the first step of the pipeline which is get raw data is essentially responsible for fetching the raw data from the test grid UI and storing it into S3 for further analysis. And the next step of the pipeline is responsible for various metric calculations. So a particular metric notebook like blocked timed out is essentially fetching the raw data that we stored onto S3, performing certain metric calculations and storing the calculated metric into a parquet format back on S3. So we want to run the two steps of this pipeline in a sequential order. In order to create a pipeline from scratch, you can hit the plus button here to go to the launcher and click on pipeline editor. So we will give it a name test pipeline. And in order to add notebooks to this pipeline, we can drag and drop any notebook. Now we need to insert inputs for each step or each notebook that we add to a pipeline in terms of image runtime, environment variables and resources. We can do that by clicking on the three buttons here and going to properties. We will specify the runtime image that we just created. We'll specify the CPU and RAM requirements for this notebook to run. Any dependencies on other Python files and notebooks can be specified here. The files must be present in the same directory. So since these notebooks are dependent on the metric template notebook, I will specify that as a dependency here as it contains certain utility functions. I will also make sure to add the environment variables like the endpoint, access key, secret key, and the bucket name. So along with that, we also need to make sure that we add an automation flag and set it as true to make sure that the notebook is running in automation. So once we have done that, we need to hit save. And since we already have a pipeline which we created, with basically the similar steps, we will rather run that. So in order to run the pipeline, you can hit the play button or the uh, run pipeline button on the top left. And here I will have to specify a pipeline name. So I will call this demo. And here I will select Kubeflow pipelines runtime and here the runtime configuration that we created is selected. So once I hit OK, I can navigate to the run details from this dialog box. 
and this will take us to the Kubeflow Pipelines UI. Now once we are on the Kubeflow UI, we can see that under experiments and runs, for each step of the pipeline, we have a rectangular box. And when we click on it in order to debug any issues that are going on while running that step, we can use the logs to identify the issues. And this typically takes few minutes or uh, more to run, but we have already run the whole pipeline before and essentially after running the whole pipeline, it should look something like this where there should be a green check mark next to each notebook or each step. And that indicates that the step has successfully executed. As a means to validate the successful running of the pipeline, we also have a helper notebook called validate underscore pipeline, which essentially checks the contents of the S3 bucket and can help us validate that the automated pipeline ran successfully. So when I run this notebook, here I can see the contents of the S3 bucket and we can validate that the triggered pipeline ran successfully by checking whether today's data has been stored on S3. As we can see here that the raw data dated today has been stored on S3 successfully, which was the first step of the pipeline. And the next step of the pipeline, which involved some parallel metric calculation steps has also executed successfully since we see that the stored metric parquet files, which are expected to be saved to S3 after a successful metric calculation. So this can also help us validate the successful running of the pipeline. And this brings us to the end of this video. And this is how we automated our notebook workflow using Elira and Kubeflow pipelines.